As we move ahead with our discussion on uh, advanced financial modeling, let's now come to an important process while creating a financial model. Right, so it's always good to have some sort of a process flow that we understand, which is basically what are the inputs plus what are the assumptions. And on these, you will do some calculations and that should give you your output, right? At the same time, you have to understand that in this entire process, what kind of uh, scalability may be required tomorrow? What kind of uh, flexibility may be required tomorrow, right? It's a, it's a good idea to probably think a little bit further and think of uh, what could be the requirements later on from a financial model, not just the current set of requirements we are working with, right? It's important because uh, what it does is it, uh, it essentially uh, ensures that uh, at no point of time we are uh, not looking at uh, the flow of the model and at no point of time we are uh, just trying to solve something that's given to us today and not really thinking about scaling it up to a bigger model tomorrow, right? That should be the idea that any model can be used as a subcomponent of a bigger model. And if that scalability and flexibility is allowed, then that's a fantastic model. To build with right so that's where we start with and that's what we're going to look at so the major do's and don'ts while building a model some major things need to be taken care of right some are very basic in terms of aesthetic that we have to be using the same font everywhere so if it's times new roman it's times new roman everywhere if it is uh, if it is uh, calibri it's calibri everywhere unless something that is a header right so for example if i'm listing down uh, revenue, operating revenue, costs, etc. Then on the top, income statement may be in a different font size, but everything else has to be in a similar font. So revenue, costs, tax, everything has to be in the same font essentially, right? Decimal points you've already seen should be same across the entire model. Units should be displayed prominently. So is it INR? Is it INR million? Is it in numbers? Is it uh, in percentage you have to basically put a column and put all those numbers there model objectives should be clearly defined which is why does the model exist why are we building this model that has to be clearly defined model inputs assumption should be clearly defined which is what are we trying to kind of uh, capture and then model flow should be clearly defined as to how are we basically moving from an input to the output right that's important to kind of put in in terms of the questions that we have and uh, if we can keep in mind these questions then the chances of a model going wrong or errors in financial models will reduce considerably right let's look at how do we define the model objective before we embark upon creating a financial model the question we have to answer is why are we building this model so the question why comes again and we have to answer that question. Is it for comparing company financials? Is it for looking at asset allocation? Is it to do some sort of risk analysis? Is it some sort of repayment schedule? Now, why is this why necessary? Because it tells us what could be the requirements later on, which helps us creating some sort of a scalability. So if let's say I am putting financial numbers for a company, if I know I have to compare company financials, then I can create the model in such a way that comparing becomes simpler. I can probably put in financial statements of a company side by side of company A, B, C side by side so that comparison becomes easier. I can probably start thinking about putting charts which compare data for two companies and then tomorrow I can add a third one which can directly come in. I can probably create some data using pivot tables which can automatically start comparing data points across companies, right? So if I am building it for a company financial comparison objective across the sector, then keeping in mind the scalability, I might take a different approach than if I was taking a repayment schedule scenario, right? It is important to define some of these model objectives. Once we define the model objectives, we can then search for what should be the inputs and then what should be the output of the model right 
typically that's the way it works it's easier to look at this using certain examples so let's create this entire process flow in terms of a particular example let us assume that we are building the valuation model for a company that runs cinema screens like a pvr or inox or one of these guys right let us lay down the objectives so what is the objective objective here is nothing but valuation we have to value a company valuation of equity of a company right the moment we lay down this objective of valuation what are the inputs that are needed inputs that are needed for any valuation and you know basically if you have to do valuation we have to also define how are we going to do the valuation is it going to be discounted cash flow valuation or relative valuation let's assume at this point of time we are doing dcf so for dcf we need the cash flows we need uh, the cost of capital right which basically means that in terms of cash flows i need the pnl statement i need the balance sheet or i need revenues i need costs and i need other headers as well in terms of cost of capital i need the risk free rate i need the beta i need the rm minus rf and those kind of models if i am using cost of capital i need the weight of debt and weight of equity as well and cost of debt as well and tax rate as well these are my inputs i have to arrive at some sort of assumptions around this right now if if i zero down on the last numbers then i have to find out how are revenues coming in right so my assumptions will start flowing in in terms of the flow of revenue once i have the inputs defined how does a cinema hall make revenue so revenue can can be on three headers it could be ticket sales it could be food and beverage and it could be advertisements right remember when we go to a cinema hall we see those advertisements it could be advertising ticket sales come in the form of average ticket price multiplied by seats multiplied by the occupancy how many people come to the cinema hall so multiplied by the occupancy and you can multiply it with the number of screens a company has and you can multiply it with the number of shows the company runs so let's say one cinema hall has five screens running four shows a day occupancy is 30% seats are 300 per cinema and average ticket price is 150 you can multiply and you'll get the revenue for that day multiply with 365 you will get the revenue for the year that's your model flow that's the flow of arriving at the revenue food and beverages out of the number of seats and occupancy right which is basically the number of people visiting you can multiply these to get people visiting into percentage eating how many of them are eating something into average spend and that gives me a broad uh, calculation for food and beverages right advertising is straightforward you can just calculate the advertising revenue probably per screen on average during the year right if you have historical data you can just calculate make an assumption on that and move on once you have defined these equations once you have defined these equations we know what data points are available what data points are needed we know what are the inputs which are available so we know these inputs and we will need to make an assumption for whatever is not available right so inputs plus assumptions come from this process flow this thinking that how does a company run its business correct next comes the process flow so we have our revenues revenues minus we can figure out the costs of running this what are the major costs for example and we get the profits from profits we have to try and find the cash flow from cash flow we have to discount the cash flow to arrive at the price right that's the flow so you will typically have a pnl sheet you will have a balance sheet you will have a cash flow you can create a sheet for any other balance sheet projections for example if the company has debt then you can create a debt schedule 
if you have capacity expansion plans you can create a capex schedule so you can create sheets around all this and of course there is a sheet around the assumptions it's always good to put one sheet for all kinds of assumptions right so you've created all these sheets and then you can have a dcf sheet at the end which basically does the calculations on discounted cash flows that's your output so that's your process flow once you discount the cash flow you will get your output and these are the number of sheets that you will have to create in general while building any model so that's broadly it i mean before building the model you just need to think in your mind okay how does the business run what are the parameters that might be available what are the parameters i might have to assume how do i create the equation on sheets i can practically if it is easier for me create a separate sheet for revenue separate sheet for costs as well whatever is easy for me and easy for the user to comprehend i will go about doing that right that's basically my sample process flow for a model let's take another example let's say we are trying to build a model for repayment of loans what are the inputs is any flexibility needed later so let's let's make this a home loan right let's say someone takes a home loan of 40 lakhs so what do i need i need the principal amount i need the tenure i need the interest rate correct those are the major parameters that i need interest rate tenure principal amount and uh, once i have the tenure of the loan and the interest rate and the principal amount i know that i can solve this to find out what is going to be my emi right so these are my inputs or assumptions and then i can have functions which basically solve for this emi so what is the function that's called pmt now what are the flexibilities that i might need later the flexibility is that tomorrow interest rate may change now if interest rate let's say goes down if rate goes down i have two options i can reduce the tenure and keep emi the same or i can reduce emi and keep the tenure the same right if you think about it 20 year loan 40 lakhs whatever is the emi amount if interest rates go down either i don't need to hold it for 20 years if i'm paying the same amount or i don't need to pay the same amount if i want to hold it for uh, 20 years so depending on what works the best for me i can choose that amount right also i might be required to find out what portion of the emi is interest and what is principal right so you can find out this by a function called ppmt you can also create a model that calculates interest individually so emi minus interest will give you the principal correct so essentially all i need to know is that if interest rate goes down what could be the problems if interest rate goes up what could be the problems and how do i model for those can i create these scenarios in my model i have to leave all this open if i just use the functions pmt putting in the rate putting it the tenure putting in the present value of the loan and future value of the loan then i'll just get the emi number but i will not get a scenario on what happens if rate changes what happens if tenure changes what happens if i uh, if i want to find out what was the exact principal amount that was paid so the objective here is to essentially ensure that future flexibility and scalability is taken care of what happens if this simple model is tomorrow being used by the bank to kind of check uh, the cash flows for the bank over multiple uh, loans over a period of time right what happens if uh, interest rates are moving dramatically in the economy and a bank or a person wants to study the impact of movement of interest rates on overall uh, financials right so in terms of any financial model it is a good idea to keep in mind what could be future extensions for this model right and that's where we go back to our initial discussion that we have to define what is the objective which is why are we doing it what are the key inputs which will come from what are the drivers of that particular input or business model that is there and then 
how are we going to kind of build the model as it appears right that's basically what we are trying to do whenever we are going to look at any kind of financial model right now it might be a good idea for you to try and exercise on this which is let's say there's a question if you were to build a model for valuation of a two-wheeler company which is selling motorcycles what are the inputs you need what are the outputs you need how do you define your objective what broadly will be the process flow right this will be similar to the to the cinema exercise just that your inputs and assumptions might change and you have to define whether some of those are available not available etc right so that's basically it in this particular video thank you